Hello, my name is Joe O'Brien and I'm a public librarian. I'm a graduate student at Rutgers School of Communication and Information, earning my master's degree in library and information science. I'm also a musician and have been writing reviews and other articles about music for nearly 20 years. Now, if you have overlapping interests in both music and scholarship, as I do, if you're also a student or a librarian or teacher involved in any way with music, music journalism, ethnomusicology, music history, or musical archiving, or even if you're not officially an academic but still a highly curious musician or music aficionado, then the Smithsonian Global Sound Database is a fantastic resource for you, and I'm going to give you an overview of it in this screencast. Smithsonian Global Sound is one of several music-related databases that are part of the Alexander Street Electronic Academic Database Publishing Company. You can see the others along the bottom of the screen here. Uh, and Alexander Street itself is owned by ProQuest. Now, the Smithsonian Global Sound database is a collection of over 3,000 digitized albums. That's over 45,000 tracks total from 169 countries, representing over 1,400 cultural groups in over 450 languages, covering many genres, primarily folk, blues, bluegrass, jazz, and spoken word, all of which are further categorized into over 1,000 subgenres. As far as time goes, Smithsonian Global Sound contains music written from the Middle Ages all the way through to today, with the actual recordings spanning the 20th and 21st centuries. Now let's take a look at the interface. As we can see on the home page here, the left side focuses on browsing by topics, and over on the right side is the search bar. Below the search bar, there's also some images of new and featured resources you can check out if any of them catch your eye. The layout here is ideal for this database because it's great whether you're looking to browse by, say, genre or place or instruments or cultural groups. It's all based on the site's specially developed controlled vocabularies. And the database is also great if you'd like to search entering your own terms in the search bar here. We've got the basic search uh, and as well as an advanced search that we can get to clicking on here. There's 13 fields to choose from. Some of these fields as you can see, will allow you to select from an alphabetical list, if that's your preference, or uh, there are numerous buttons further down that you can click on to limit your search. So, for instance, if if you wanted to find recordings that feature, let's say, Cajun uh, music with uh, that includes. Uh, let's see, what kind of instrument? Accordion, Cajun accordions um, in the region of United States and Canada. And let's say we want the dates 1940 to 1980. We can do that in search. And here we go. Let's see what we get. Ah, here we go. We got the Cajun Swing. Let's click on that. And immediately it starts playing some Cajun music. We'll take a look at that a little later. Um, do keep in mind though that there's no Boolean search operators in the advanced search, so basically any term you enter or limiter you select will be automatically combined as if you were using the AND operator. Of course, you don't have to be that specific, so if you want to do a more basic search for, let's say, Woody Guthrie, you can just enter his name in the basic search bar here, and here are 61 albums related to Woody Guthrie. Uh, Take note here below the search bar, you can continue to modify your search within the results currently on the page or modify within all of Smithsonian Global Sound. Also to the right of the search bar, you can sort these results by uh, relevance or title or recency. And if you'd rather see results not sorted by album, but by individual tracks, you can switch that to, and 
here we have 932 tracks related to Woody Guthrie. At this point in your search, you may remember that Woody Guthrie is not just a singer, but a songwriter whose songs have been covered by many other musicians, and maybe you're only interested in recordings where Woody is the actual performer. So in that case, uh, you can go over to the left side of the page here and narrow your results um, to only include recordings where Woody is the performer and not just the songwriter. So if we click on that, it looks like we're going to get 33 albums instead of 61 where Woody is the performer and not uh, the songwriter. Another great thing about Smithsonian Global Sound is that in addition to having this vast uh, library of high quality recordings available, we can also, um, let's click on this first Woody Guthrie album and pause it there so it doesn't start playing. Um, you can see on the, the right here where it says related documents, uh, we can also read the liner notes to that album, which are available to download as a PDF. And as music scholars like us know, liner notes often provide so much valuable context that is not necessarily available in the recordings themselves. So um, we'll see, we have essays about Woody Guthrie. Uh, we'll have background information on all the tracks. Uh, we'll have bibliographic and discographical information about the recordings and all of which are great to have access to, especially if you're doing any kind of academic research or if you're just a really curious listener and love learning music trivia. Also, if we go uh, to this side of the page, you'll see that we have uh, the ability to cite our sources, which is very helpful for the academics and you can get all varieties of uh, citation formats depending on what your need is. Now, probably my favorite feature of Smithsonian Global Sound is the ability to make your own playlists, just like on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever music streaming service you might use. Now, in order to make playlists, you would need to create an account but as long as you already have access to the database through your institution or other subscription, it's free to do. You just need to sign up with an email address. And once you have your account set up, let's say you're a public librarian like me, and you're doing some kind of musical story time program for the kids at your library. Maybe you want to look up some songs that you can play and sing for the kiddos. And if we go down here on the home page, we can see that children's song is one of the genres listed. And I click on that, I get 311 results for my search, 311 albums full of children's songs. So oh, classic folk songs for kids. Perfect. That should have exactly the kind of material that I need. And uh, it'll pull up the tracks. Great. Froggy went a courtin' right here. That would be a perfect song uh, for a children's story time. Now what I want to do is I want to click on the plus here and select the track and then I want to go over here to playlist. Click on playlist and we have a playlist folk songs for kids that we can add it to. And there it is. You can make a whole playlist of songs that you can then consult later. Um, and you can also set visibility options to make it visible just for yourself or if you're a teacher or want to share your playlists for any other reason, uh, you have the option to do that as well. Now, in spite of the many great features of Smithsonian Global Sound that I just went over, there are a couple of drawbacks that I've noticed. For instance, the navigation can occasionally be clunky and may require you to engage in some trial and error to figure out how to move about the database and find what you're looking for. And secondly, in spite of Smithsonian Global Sound's vast scope of music across time and space, it is extremely limited in other genres such as pop, rock, hip-hop. So if you're looking for sounds in genres like that, you may want to consult another database. Well, that's all the time we have for this tutorial. I hope you found Smithsonian Global Sound to be a fascinating and valuable database as I have. This is Joe O'Brien wishing you happy searching and happy listening. <laughs>